you're looking at the future of motoring, the electric car. It's your own fuel station, isn't it, really? It's my own fuel station. Very convenient. At least that's what electric car evangelist Linda Nichols believes. Want to go for a ride, my be? Yes, please. So where are, gonna, where, where are we going to go? I'm not sure. We'll just go where the road takes us. Okay. We're running, are we? Yes. We're running. Yes, we're it's running. It's very quiet, isn't it? Yes. Linda bought Andy. her all-electric Toyota RAV4 a decade ago. California wanted to reduce smog and forced its car companies to produce zero emission vehicles. One of the things I think I enjoy most is the quiet, no vibration, peaceful ride. I feel very empowered by driving this car. I'm no longer a gasoline junkie. Linda says her car is a dream come true. When she gets home, she simply plugs it in and recharges the batteries. In a few hours, she'll have enough power to drive about 150 kilometres. And that's it. That's it. Her total electricity bill for the house and two electric cars is an astonishing $2 a month. That's because she's covered her roof in solar panels. They generate so much electricity, she sells power back to the grid when she's not plugged in. She says that if she charged her car directly from the grid, it would still only cost the equivalent of 20 cents per litre of petrol. The beauty of electricity, it's cleaner, it's cheaper, and this is very important. It's domestically produced, and no war has ever been fought for electricity, and even more particularly, no war has ever been fought for solar, and it never will be. This is a free solar-powered public charging station in Los Angeles. One of a network of stations developed in the 90s to support electric vehicles. This is one of those electric chargers. Right. In fact, uh, basically just uh, push a button in the car and it opens up the charging port right here. And that's so, it? That's it. We used to uh, joke that it only takes three seconds to charge an electric car. Uh, but I'll want to leave this here for 45 minutes at least to, to like get a good pop. I'm Felix Kramer, and I'm the founder of CalCars.org, the California Cars Initiative, and we're a nonprofit startup, uh, and we're a hybrid ourselves. We uh, combine ad advocacy and technology development, which you don't usually find in one organization, and we're also a combination of an unusual group of different kinds of people. We're entrepreneurs, environmentalists, engineers, and just plain citizens and car drivers, and we're all trying to get better cars and we're focusing on plug-in hybrids. CalCars.org is trying to get car makers to build plug-in hybrids. Most people don't really uh, know much about hybrids or plug-in hybrids. So you have to start with what a hybrid is. Hybrid is an efficient all-gasoline car. 
at stoplights, it turns off completely. And you, when you go up a hill, you use a lot of energy. On the way back down, you recapture about half of that into a battery, and you use that to start up again. And that enables you to get a, a go from maybe 25 to 50 miles a gallon in your car. But it's still all gasoline. A plug-in hybrid takes that idea and takes it to the logical conclusion. We had a larger battery, and we enable that battery to be fueled not just by gasoline going down hills, but by plugging it in. And you just use a regular 120-volt plug. Uh, and what this does is it starts, instead of making your car more efficient, uh, less use of gasoline, it displaces gasoline with electricity. And that's the big winner because electricity is better than gasoline. First, it's uh, cheaper, a dollar a gallon equivalent for your driving. Second, it's cleaner. Uh, it's about half as much CO2 emissions as gasoline, even on the national grid, which is half coal. And third, it's domestic. We don't use gasoline to make electricity. So all these things go into a plug-in hybrid, and what you do is you're, uh, you're running your car for your local miles electrically. And that second fuel tank, you fill it with electricity and you use it first every day. So you still have a hybrid car, but your local miles every day when you commute are electric. And then if you want to go off hundreds of miles, you've still got your hybrid car, which is gasoline fueled. So car makers could build plug-in hybrids now, uh, and we could start using them. Compared to any other alternative fuel, we don't need a new infrastructure and we don't need new technology to do it. It's something that could happen right now. Uh, I'm the world's first consumer owner of a plug-in hybrid. I have a Prius uh, that was converted in spring 2006. So when I got that Prius, I went from a regular gasoline car's 25 miles a gallon to a hybrid's 45, 50 miles a gallon. And now, in my daily driving, I get over 100 miles a gallon of gasoline, plus about a penny a mile of electricity. I, I sometimes go over 1,000 miles on a tank and uh, sometimes can go weeks without refueling. and I decided to get rooftop photovoltaic panels. And what that means is I have what's called a grid tied system. It means that in the daytime, my rooftop solar system uh, powers the meter back to zero and sends electricity back to the grid. And at night, I power my car. Now I'm on a time of use rate, so I'm powering my car with the cheapest uh, uh, electricity there is. And what that means is I get a quicker payoff on my solar system because I'm using it not just to displace the electricity I use in the house every day, but I'm using it to displace ga the price of gasoline. Wherever I go when people see my car with 100 miles per gallon plastered over the side, uh, it, years ago they used to say, what's that? Now they know what it is. They know it's a plug-in hybrid. They want to get one. And uh, they can't get one. That's the problem. Right now, we're waiting for the car makers. There have been some conversions. There are a few dozen plug-in hybrids in the world. There are some aftermarket companies that will convert your car for many, many thousands of dollars. But the main point is to get the car makers to do it. And we think that, for instance, Toyota could take a twenty-two to $33,000 Prius and sell it as a plug-in hybrid for about three thousand dollars more and that would be a win on all counts so there's a whole campaign that's going on for uh, to organize people to do that everybody can tell their dealers I'm not going to buy another car until I can plug it in uh, they can do that they can support calcars.org and pluginamerica.org, which is emphasizing both plug-in hybrids and electric vehicles. And there's a national campaign for what's called a soft fleet buy order. It's pluginpartners.org, and it was started by some utilities. And they are organizing a national campaign among fleet owners to say, if these cars were made by the car makers, here's exactly what I want. This is the SUV, this is the truck, this is the car I want. And they're organizing and getting thousands of people to sign up. And you can also sign up as an individual in a petition there. And there's a national organization called setamericafree.org, which is organizing legislative efforts to try to get in Congress. There's a Drive Act, which is an amazing coalition of uh, Democrats and Republicans, liberals and conservatives, environmentalists and, uh, de and skeptics, all supporting uh, plug-in cars as a, uh, as a solution to uh, global warming, energy dependence, and, uh, and, and, and the economic uh, crisis of the auto industry. I'm driving around in my neighborhood at low speeds. All you really hear is the tire noise. There's no engine sounds at all. The motor is completely silent. It's an electric car.